avoidance. It's about acceptance. It can be a, a white lie, but it can be the epitome of deception. It can be the action without words that can resolve all or throw everything up in the air. My name's uh, Thomas Gardner. I'm an aspiring actor, director, writer. Um, together, we are Warwick and Gardner. Well, my name's Ben Warwick. I am a professional musician and teacher by trade. I graduated in the early 90s and have been dabbling in amateur theatre ever since, but I've been a professional musician for all of that time. <laughs> Unspoken Speaking, um, it's a, a brand new production that we have co-written together. Um, and I suppose there is one main storyline, or so the audience will think from the offset. Well, it uh, revolves around two boys. Uh, it goes through their lives, through um, what they kind of go through. I suppose uh, being a child into that adulthood stage, and there's also um, that third character being uh, one of the boys' uh, mother, who... Um, She's very controlling, isn't she? She's a very controlling character. And uh, it would appear that her first and foremost thought is a, a complete consumption of, of fear of what everybody else will, will think about her. And that's very much reflected in the way that she interacts with her son. But actually, sometimes the way that she doesn't, because it's almost like he's not there, isn't it? Mm. Mm. Mom! <laughs> What's the matter? What have I done? What have you done? Yeah. I tell you time and time again, I choose what you do and don't do. And you, you just go ahead and ignore and embarrass me in front of James, who will no doubt go running off home to his mother, telling her all about what he's managed to get away with. And all because you chose to ignore me. What on earth is his mother going to think about me? Sorry. 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 How can I believe that you're sorry, Reese? You keep doing this to me. You keep ignoring everything I say. I allow you the privilege of having friends in my house. And just look, look, your room is a pigsty. All my hard work and my standards. And now James has seen everything and he'll no doubt go running home telling everybody he sees about the mess that I live in. And all because you keep ignoring me, Reese. You keep ignoring me. Everybody's going to be talking about me and all because of the things you do, Reese. Sorry. The story actually follows the boys at sort of three stages in their lives. We've got them sort of like as, as young boys and then sort of like into early adolescence, into later adolescence, into, yes. into adulthood. But during that... They've always been very, very close. How would you define their friendship? It's one of those friendships where at the, at the beginning, it's every, everyone would want a friendship like that. It's actually quoted that the two boys actually from virtually from nursery school sort of shared everything from chicken box to bath time, didn't they? You know, yeah, yeah, that yeah, kind yeah. of idea. So that's how they've grown up. But they've both even at that stage got very different characters. Yeah, they're, they're, they are very different in the sense that, I mean, they're almost opposites in a way. Yes. You've got the uh, you've got Reese, who's uh, well, Reese is played by me in the video. Isn't yes, he? at the yes, moment, yeah, Reese yeah, yeah. is played by me, and uh, he's very uh, kind of underconfident, um, not sure of himself. Uh, he's very polite. He's very well kept. Um, he's probably slightly boxed in, actually. Mm -hmm. Whereas uh, James is uh, an opposite to that. We've got. He's very confident, very witty, very clever. Um, he's always coming out with the latest expressions that you hear. Yes, in the yeah, yeah. He's the one coming up with the trends and everyone's kind of going, oh, that's really cool. He, so in that kind of, you know, that social aspect, 
He's uh, Reese. They're, is, they're almost comp- they're opposites. And Reese is always desperate to jump on that bandwagon all the time and be that cool yeah, kid. Yeah, yeah. I can't quite make it, and yet he's never actually laughingly sneered at by uh, mm. James at mm. this point. There's a real affection between them. When he gets it wrong, James will laugh at him, but there's an affection about it, isn't there? As Absolutely. well, there's a real closeness Absolutely. between them. Yeah! Oh, look! Look what you made me do to my homework! Well, that's alright, you can copy mine. You haven't done your homework. Nah, but it won't take me long. Oh, don't you worry about getting your homework done. I've got too many other things to worry about. Like? Shaving. Shaving? Shaving. Shaving? Shaving. You don't shave. Yeah, I do. No, you don't. Yeah, I do. No, you don't. Yeah, I do. How often? Every six weeks. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> Sadly, it does start to go wrong a little bit as they're growing yeah. up. They're both becoming very aware of who they are um, and what they should be according to sort of like social perception and social norm. One of the big things within this play is identity issues. Mm. Uh, knowing who you are and not knowing who you are and trying to find out where you stand in the world apart as you, uh, who you want to be. And they kind of switch where James has always been this... This, this very confident character and, and Reese being this very underconfident character and Reese starts to try and find himself and he's really going up, he's really finding who he is, what he wants to be. Um, and James is going, da- he's going down, he's, he's been this really confident character and, and, and something happens between them where for James that really rocks him and he doesn't know he completely loses an idea of who he is. Well, James is sort of going up through life and he's going to be sort of like going to be out with every woman and he's going to be really cool and have lots of girlfriends and, and whatever else have you. But as so often happens between any teenager of, 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 of uh, you know, whether they're male or female, there comes that moment where there's just that suggestion that there could be more than friendship between them at that level. Very mm-hmm. innocent. But as you say, that completely rocks James and he just goes right off on one, leaving Reese even more confused mm-hmm. because A, Reese thinks that it's okay to be what he wonders might be the case with himself, but also, you know, rocks his world in as much as he thought that, you know, James would be rolling with him, even if just supporting him, but not actually there at the same time. And so they end up not talking, don't yeah. they? For, yeah. for a long time, they end up not talking and completely avoiding each other. But the issue that we've got with that is that, of course, they've got the same sort of like social network of friends who are desperately wanting to see them become friends again. You know, it's the same as anything else. When everybody's outside that situation and sees two people, one in each corner, not speaking, the answer is so simple, apart from the two people that are in each of the corners. Um, And so they're desperate to try and sort of like pull them back together again, and it just doesn't appear to happen. I've been through days when there's a smile on my face that must the fact that in my soul there's a space Because my, my heart is dependent on the, on the need for a soul that needs the The home of a heart that needs the The heart of a soul that needs me I wonder if you're out there reaching for me I can almost feel you since you're longing to be A part of, a part of my heart and my, my soul A part of your heart To live and love is where the dream Then we have a massive showdown at a party one night between the two of them where they do literally lock horns. Listen, mate, I don't know what you're after, but I'm here with my girlfriend. Oh, for God's sake, don't flatter yourself. All I want you to do is admit that you and I used to be friends. Remember? Friends? We did everything together. And okay, we got to a point, and we might have got a bit close. It didn't have meant anything, but since then, you have trekked me like absolute... Ever since then, my life has just been complete... You are completely... God. It's the other girl over there, in the corner. That's my girlfriend. 
You can learn a thing or two from her. She knows what a real man is. at my age want to do. He wants to go out, drink, um, get absolutely trashed. I was going to say, we've written this wonderful scene, haven't we, whereby you managed to actually go through sort of like three different women, each of who is overpassed for the next one, and there's a wonderful revenge part where each of them actually tumble <laughs> what's been going on, and uh, you get rather slapped. I do. It's really good fun. We quite enjoy that bit. See that one? It good. works very well. <laughs> one of the comments that I do get from people, which at first I must admit worried me, um, was that they sort of said, you know, we only have to hear the songs once and we remember them. And that worried me at first, because I thought, gosh, is it because this is too predictable? Is it, is it too um, simple? But actually, you know, on, on, on looking back on reflection, you know, what's the reason that all of us will remember a really good song? Because it's good for us, because there was part of it that we could relate to. And if people can relate to this in a way that actually they, they remember it so easily, then that's got to be a good thing. Sometimes it's really hard to choreograph something, because you don't have anything as a background. But with this one, the lyrics meant so much, and from singing it, you know, a number of times every week, I felt like I was really involved and I knew what was going on the story. So for me, generating material for this was so much easier than other things that I've done. Come here, my child, you're tired and cold. You need a hand, there's mine to hold. as it can because while on the face of it it's just another everyday story of everyday life I believe that the music um, captures a lot of people um, I believe that the music is new enough to be noticed um, and I believe that it's time to kind of like go back to this this kind of non-radical musical theatre um, that, that seems to be sort of like out there so much more these days. It's also really exciting that this is happening in mid-Cornwall. There can't be many brand new musical plays happening within the UK and the fact that it's happening here in mid-Cornwall is, 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 a, is a lovely thing for, for mid-Cornwall as well. To, so we're very excited and we're very lucky that this is actually going to be a St Austral Players production. The other complication throughout this, and in fact the other storyline, which probably becomes much, much more prevalent throughout the production, and maybe for some members of the audience will actually make them leave feeling that that had in fact been the main storyline, um, is that of Reese's mum. There's something about her from the offset that doesn't appear quite right, and sure enough as the play actually unfolds, you'll see that she increasingly loses her temper, um, and, and starts communicating with Reese, but almost in a way that Reese isn't there. Now, interestingly enough, at this point, every single time without fail, you'll see another character enter the stage who we've named Memory. Memory so far, yeah. Um, and Memory um, actually comes on and literally just stands and looks at um, Reese's mum. And as time goes on, we actually realise that what this is, this is a character who is representing um, the memory of Reese's mum's 
mum, if you like. It's, yeah, it, it's yeah. kind of like, uh, and then the audience can assume from the offset straight away that this person is probably not alive anymore, but very much alive within Reese's mum's memory. And she's almost sort of like haunting it, overriding it, influencing everything mm -hmm. that Reese's mum does. Every time Reese's mum goes off on one, sure enough, there's the image of this this with this woman that we call memory standing in the yeah. background. Looking it, it's, over it's, it's our interpretation of, of what those kind of psychological issues that mm -hmm. come about from being in a household where you have absolutely no control over your own being, over your own life. Mm -hmm. you've, you've had someone uh, always making sure you're doing what they think is socially mm -hmm. acceptable, mm -hmm. which is absolutely awful for the child. And yes. she can't, Reese's mother can't get over what's happened. No. And every time this memory character comes on the stage, it's, a, um, it's an interpretation of what is that? What's happening mm. in her mind at that mm. at that moment? Very, she's very much she's so. looking at her child Reese, and she's seeing him do that, and she's remembering back to when she was doing the same thing, and it, yeah. she just can't. The anger that she feels, she can't, she can't override right. it, and it just takes over, and she just does exactly the same thing. And interestingly enough, if you actually look at Reese as the play develops, as he's becoming more comfortable with who and what he is, he's actually kind of like got used to this. He's realised that this is what the case is. He's realised that this is probably something that he cannot actually help her with and deal with, and so he just has to move on. Also then added a scene which gives the audience an insight into perhaps why Reese's mum is in fact the way that she is. Um, with the suggestion of another character that appears, but we're not going to say too much about that oh, because no. we don't want to spoil that surprise. Watch but the uh, watch the show. <laughs> we try to swallow pride to ease that fate. It would be so dull, but we always say.